Rod TV travels to an Air Force research lab in San Antonio, Texas to check out some very cool rooms called altitude chambers. They're also called hypobaric or low pressure chambers. The Air Force has tiny ones for testing small equipment and big ones for training pilots. This is a hypobaric chamber. This is a research altitude chamber and what we're doing here is bringing in equipment, testing it out, and we take it to low pressure environments to simulate as if we were flying. As you see, there's a lot of pipes connected to each chamber, and there's a vacuum system. So vacuum is to take the air out, and that way it simulates that you're going up in altitude. And then when we're ready for you to come back down, we'll put air back in there, which simulates you coming down back to the ground level. Here on Earth, we live beneath an ocean of air called the atmosphere, and it's constantly pressing on us. As we go up in altitude, there is less air above us, so there's less air pressure. At sea level, the atmospheric pressure is about 14.7 pounds per square inch. Measured with a mercury barometer, that's 760 millimeters of mercury. At 29,000 feet on Mount Everest, it drops to about 237 millimeters of mercury. But flying at 50,000 feet, like a stealth bomber, it's only 88 millimeters of mercury. So right now we're able to breathe the air fine and everything. But the higher you go, the less pressure there is. And so it makes it harder for the oxygen to exchange in the blood, which makes you get less oxygen. Oxygen is 21% of the air we breathe. As we go up in altitude, there is less air pressure and the air becomes less dense. So there are fewer oxygen molecules in each volume of air. If at sea level, the available oxygen is 100%, on Mount Everest, it's only 33%. And at 50,000 feet, it drops to 12%. Well, ideally, you don't want to ever be in that environment. If you're on the aircraft, your cabin is pressurized so that even though you might be flying at 35,000 feet, say in a commercial aircraft, the cabin may be pressurized to 5,000 feet. The altitude chamber is a safe way for pilots to experience a low pressure, low oxygen environment, see how it affects them, and learn to put on masks before they get in trouble. I've gone up to about 35,000 feet, removed myself from oxygen. Once you start getting to those higher altitudes, you need to be on oxygen above 10,000 feet. Once you get off that oxygen, you can start to get a little lightheaded, sick, potentially pass out. We do have to drop our mask and kind of experience what hypoxia means. You can get dizzy, a lot of people, their skin starts to turn blue, um, just a lot of different symptoms that people can experience. And that's why we take them up so they can experience their symptoms, so that way if it happens to them, they know what they're looking for. Pilots also have to watch out for something called decompression sickness. At high altitudes, the air pressure is so low that the gases dissolved in the body, mostly nitrogen, come out of solution. Let's see how gases can come out of a liquid state. In here right now what we have is a cylinder full of water, and what we're going to do is take it up above 60,000 feet so you can kind of see Armstrong line going into play and the water kind of bubbling up. Armstrong's line is where the atmospheric pressure is so low that water boils at body temperature. So this right here, we have the altimeter is gonna tell me how high I'm going. So right now we're at 742, 743 millimeters of mercury. That's ground level. Once we get to 60,000 feet, it should say 54. So I'm just gonna open the full vacuum and we'll see what happens. At 54 millimeters of mercury, the water boils. You can see how dangerous high altitudes can be, so the Air Force uses pressurized cabins, pressurized suits, and oxygen to keep pilots safe. And here at Brooks, they just keep testing everything. To find out more about altitude chambers and atmospheric pressure, check out labtvonline.org.